This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Welcome back to the stage of history. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now, 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 now. Hello and welcome to another episode of DreamPod by the Dreamcast Junkyard. Uh, welcome everybody. Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever it is, what time it is, where you are. I uh, hope that you're all well and I hope you're ready for another exciting episode with another exciting guest. Uh, but before we introduce uh, our guest, I'll introduce you to one of our regulars. Uh, if you don't know this person by now, then I, I I don't know what to tell you because he is amazing. It is Lewis. Hello. Oh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, I'm feeling very amazing. Thanks to that amazing introduction. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, are, you, are you well? Are you doing all right? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm good. Uh, I am very busy because I am getting yeah. married at the end of the month. So Ooh, yeah, it's exciting. coming up fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I, you've been talking about it for quite some time, so it's uh, it's exciting Fine, yeah, that it's finally, finally happening. happening. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's going to be great, but yeah, it's a lot, lot to lot to plan and a lot to figure out, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and congrats on the translation project as well. That's uh, that's all come to pass, which is fantastic. So congrats on that, and obviously Derek as well, and everybody in the team. Yes, I can finally stop mentioning it on Dream Pods, but. Yeah, for the, for anyone, last plug. Yeah, Nakaruru, the gift she gave me. Um, we translated it over the space of two years. Uh, there's an article on the blog, so go check that out if you want to know more information. Mm. Very exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yep, yeah, go and check that out. And uh, yeah, moving on. Then uh, it's just me and Lewis from the regular team today. But as mentioned before, we are joined by. A very special guest. This person uh, has a YouTube channel. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain more than that. Uh, and they do Dreamcast related uh, videos on this channel. Otherwise, it would be really silly of us to bring him on if we just did something random. Uh, so please welcome uh, Dreamcast Enjoyer, also known as Dominic. Welcome. Hello, guys. Thank you uh, very much for having me on. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Very good to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, so you're uh, you're a YouTuber, two thousand subscribers. Yeah, coming up on um, two thousand five hundred. I think it's, uh, it's nice. shot up, shot up over the last few months. I don't know why. But... Well done, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think maybe um, like I, th- I was telling Dominic just before that, like I, I I think I found his videos through the 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 algorithm, um, <laughs> but. It was a, a good recommendation, um, and yeah, so that's how I found out about his channel, and yeah, been watching ever since. Thank you. Nice, excellent. So uh, hopefully, after this episode, we can maybe get you boosted up a bit further. If uh, all of our listeners go and find the channel, we'll obviously get you to give your uh, details towards the end. But go and subscribe and uh, get you some more followers and some more some more views because there's some excellent content uh, to go look at over there. Thank you very much. That means a, a lot coming from you guys. Uh, like I, I mentioned when we were talking just before, um, very, very cringy thing to say, but you guys are actually my, my homepage, <laughs> my internet browser, because I'm one of those sad people that has a homepage. So for <laughs> you to think my videos are interesting, that means a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for making us your homepage. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's better than Bing. <laughs> Bing being oh, your no, homepage. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so before we kind of go into the meat of the episode and have a chat with uh, with Dom about uh, what he does and and all of that kind of stuff, I'm going to do the traditional random question. Um, now, obviously, sometimes we like to ask what people have been playing, uh, but I, f- I feel like we've not done that for quite some time, right? I think that's just something no. we sometimes do now. It's yeah. not very often. Um, we, we like a we like a random question, and this time Lewis came up with a question, uh, and it is related to uh, Dom and what he does. So I believe that you sometimes reference uh, cozy mode games in your videos, Dom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 
<laughs> so uh, I figure, well, Lewis figured, uh, what better way to introduce you to the dream pod than to ask you, and also the both of us, uh, what your cosy mode Dreamcast game is? What what Dreamcast game best embodies cosy mode to you? Um, oh, that's a good, that's a, a very good question. Um, so I mean, when, when I think about like sort of the phrase cosy mode, I'm just meaning a game you can um, chill out with. Maybe it's not particularly difficult or challenging, but it's very uh, immersive, colorful, optimistic, which is like a lot of Dreamcast games are like that. The big ones that spring to mind are Sonic Adventure because of all the adventure feelers you can potter around in, and also probably Toy Commander, similar reasons, like exploring all the, the colorful rooms of the house and just generally having a bit of a mess about. If I, I, oh, and, and Rent a Hero, now that I can actually play that in English, it's, it's pretty cozy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so yeah. I guess I gave you three there. <laughs> it's fine. Three, three is good. Uh, Lewis, did you come up with three, or have you just got the one? I've just got the one, um, mm. and I've coincidentally been playing it all day, actually. Uh, and that is a uh, Napple Tale. Of course, um, good choice. Yeah, it's it's like a, I mean, I mean, another tra- like like Don was just saying about Renta Hero. It's a game that has become even better for people like us since it's translation um you know because before maybe you could play it a bit and you know you could do the platforming bits but like a lot of the games kind of heart is in in the the sort of hub world that you sort of roam around in sort of a strange kind of fantasy hub and it has a really um i guess cozy kind of atmosphere but also like i really like games that have like a, a nice sort of satisfying chilled gameplay loop and this is one of them you know you 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 wake up in the ice cream shop which is where the main character stays and you save there and you go and you decode items you've collected and and you get parts out of them and create new things and character the whimsical characters around the world ask you to make uh you know items to add to the town um and you solve quests and it's just you keep kind of going round in a circle and then you go to the platforming bits and you unlock more stuff it's got that kind of really nice loop uh, and obviously there's got the, the the whole game has like a really kind of sort of nice uh uh, feeling throughout and and the the music is just like amazing it's like some of the best music you'll hear on the dreamcast so yeah it's definitely a cozy game i think but yeah um what about you andrew well but i mean before i get into mine just just to just to mention that first it sounds very much like animal crossing i've not played this game but it sounds <laughs> like it's giving off that kind of vibe yeah i might be completely wrong it's probably a little but... bit more involved than animal crossing um, right but... okay. if animal crossing had platforming elements i guess you've right, got like yeah. mer frog car in there he could easily be an animal crossing character yeah there's a character <laughs> called mayor frog car and... <laughs> he's awesome <laughs> his, his... Is, he, is he a frog crossed with a car yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. really <laughs> That's what it says on the tin. <laughs> he like, he, yeah, he's like a big frog, and he, he he's in a car, and when he like goes up to you, he just kind of drives towards you. <laughs> okay. When you first meet him, he's like stuck on the curb, and he's like, "Help! I have fallen, and I can't get up." <laughs> Your first question is just to like move him. <laughs> I'm gonna need to download this now. I need to play this. It, it, it's okay. really good. It's really good. It's such a good game. So sort of whimsical, and and that's another thing Dom mentioned before about it being, you know, games that are kind of easy as well. It's not mm. that hard either so you can it's very easy to just chill and, and play so yeah 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 very true and uh a, just a, a shout out to the sega lounge as well because i was on there recently and one of the questions in the in the quiz was napple tail and i somehow got it almost kind of right yeah uh, <laughs> that was that was uh that was painful that, that quiz was very... that quiz was brutal dude oh it my was God. really brutal <laughs> yeah it was brutal um but yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, go listen to Casey's awesome. Go listen to the Sega Lounge uh, podcast. It's on Radio Sega or just on podcast uh, apps. Uh, always worth a listen. I think you've been on there as well, haven't you, Lewis? Uh, on yeah, the I, I also uh, did badly at a quiz as well. So it seems <laughs> to be a common theme. <laughs> yes, but uh, even though I failed it, he did send me a uh, a seal of approval postcard through the post, which was very nice oh, of him. Very so, nice of him. I didn't get yeah. one of those. So I think I think it's new. You need to go on again, and okay. you'll uh, you'll probably get one. Casey, have me on again. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, so my cozy game, and it's probably a cop out, and it's the answer you're probably going to expect from me. Um, but it is Shenmue, um, and it's. It's not like the main story of the game or anything, but it literally is just being able to pot around. Like specifically Shenmue 1, there is this coziness about yeah. being in a town that Rio is familiar with. I mean, Hong Kong's different because he's a stranger there and it's it's all a bit, 
you know, exciting and lots going on and stuff. But the, the town that Rio lives in, in in the first Shamu is so laid back, apart from, you know, the goings on in the story. It's very laid back. You can just go to the shop, look around, go to the mm. arcade, just stroll around town, speak to people. You know, you don't have to follow the main quest. You can just go and do what the hell you like. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, when I've played it, I do spend several days in the game sometimes not even bothering to follow the quest. I will just go and chill and do what I want to do. And I think, you know, it's incredibly cosy for that. It just gives you a nice a nice feeling um, that you're, you know, it's just in a, in a chill place doing what you want. So, yeah, I would say maybe a cop out, but I'd say Shemu. I don't think it's a cop out. It's, it's a really peaceful game. I like that one a lot as well. I'm just looking at the little cans of drinks and the gacha pond machines yeah. and stuff. <laughs> I, I think that the second one does have a cozy moment, and that's the bit where after all the kind of kerfuffle of getting to Hong Kong and lo- he loses his his stuff and he get mm. you know he, he moves in with I can't remember what she's called now, uh, but the the lady at the the shrine um mm-hmm. and he, you have to do the book thing i kind of liked that like if you have to like that that mini game where you move the books but that whole section <laughs> feels very cozy because he's kind of like he's 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 found kind of a temporary home for that moment and it's like yeah it's mm-hmm. really nice so but yeah def- the first one's definitely the cozy mode i feel like i'm appropriating dom's term here <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i have any claim on, on that i'm sure somebody else has probably said it <laughs> yeah tra- you need to trademark it quick <laughs> Nice. Okay. I mean, um, I mean, me and Lewis went into a little bit of depth on our games. Did you want to, I don't know if Dom, if you want to pick one of your games and just go into a little bit of depth about why it's, co- I mean, I'd be quite yeah. interested to know why Sonic Adventure is cozy, to be honest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I was, I was probably going to go with Sonic Adventure or, or I was maybe going to say Sonic Commander because not enough people know that one, but Sonic Adventure, because mm. obviously a lot of people, I guess, when they think about that, and especially like Sonic Adventure 2 has this massive, legacy i think where a lot of people when they just think about sonic adventure they're like oh yeah shadow the hedgehog and stuff but Mm. sonic adventure one's such a different energy isn't it and i think it's because of the um what are they called the adventure fields like the the hub world bits station square Mm. and mystic ruins and stuff those are the bits that i find cozy like um i think i mentioned this on a video at some point the 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 fact that they um modeled tails's little workshop that would have been such an easy thing for them to just kind of design for a, a cutscene, but then you know not give it any collision you never actually need to go there in the world um that would have been easy to do but they they modeled it and made you be able to sort of climb up and have a potter around in it and it, you know there's not a, a huge amount there but it's just the fact that oh i'm i'm in tails's house this character who you know i was born in the late 80s so grew up just playing sonic all my life and a big tails fan i was like oh now i'm just hanging out in tails's house that's that's pretty cool um it's got a, a big hangout element i think you just you know partnering around in station square talking to the people um even if they don't have very much to say it's just it's funny and it's it's wholesome yeah. <laughs> nice. i suppose it's like shenmu light yeah. yeah i will say i'm here for the the sonic adventure love because it's, it's had a bit of a bad rap for a, a many years now it was kind of like initially it was like oh that's super cool there's a whale and then it was like <laughs> people started hating it and now we need to kind of get back to Kind of like what Dom was doing there, where it's like, you know, they actually just modelled Tails Workshop. Like, that's kind of cool. Like, you know, there's a lot of nice detail put into this game. We should give it more props, you know? I absolutely agree. Because everyone just likes sort of the the really hypey Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, I'm grinding on a rail and like now it's Shadow the Hedgehog and I've got a gun or whatever. (laughs) People seem to like that edgy (laughs) side of Sonic now, whereas I still like the cozy stuff. That's fair enough. Yeah. Um, don't don't read my write up for Sonic Adventure in Dreamcast Year One because uh, <laughs> it does not speak kindly of, uh, of Sonic Every- Adventure. Oh, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I mentioned on a video that I, I wasn't as big of a fan of, of Sonic Adventure Two, um, and I thought it was just a flippant comment, and I got a lot of hate mail over that. Oh, really? <laughs> so, oh, no. so, but but I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not like that. Did um, you say like I swear you said something along the lines of Shadow is like the worst. <laughs> character or something like that oh, it made like me laugh one of the worst conceivable characters because sonic himself was already meant to be like this attitude edgy guy and that was okay because it was the 90s and then they were like let's make him a bit more edgy and brought in knuckles but i still thought knuckles was really cool and then it, it just seemed like they were just trying to increasingly outdo the edginess on every installment and yeah. shadow just felt like it got to the point of parody for me <laughs> and just didn't like him <laughs> yeah that's understandable i think yeah, yeah. i mean to- i mean i think i've said 
maybe before on, on the junkyard or somebody has said it, but it just total edge lord shadow is is an edge yeah. lord, and it's yeah, just like, like got gothic sonic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think the only time he really worked was in two, and then they just kind of milked it beyond that. I mean, the Shadow of the Hot Hedgehog game for PS2, dear lord. Um, <laughs> and... I feel like if they ever did a crossover and shoved him in like Kingdom Hearts as an antagonist, that would work. You know, if mm. those IPs ever met. But other than that, I don't really want to see him. <laughs> now, now I'm wondering what you could do, like with a Kingdom Hearts like IP, but with Sonic, like Sonic oh. mixed with a different IP. Be still my beating heart. What would you mix it with, though? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It'd have to be. It needs to be kind of Disney esque, right? So I'm. Th- I'm wondering. Mm. You could do it. Dr- maybe DreamWorks, but that would like be Shrek and stuff. Then <laughs> <laughs> be like. I'm, I'd be here for that. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> That's like the the meme side of the internet. It's like wet dream right there. <laughs> like Shrek and Shadow the Hedgehog in the same game. Oh my god! I can already imagine the uh, the, the uh, deviant outpost. Oh no! Uh... <laughs> no. Let's not let's not imagine those. <laughs> quick, move on, quick. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're family friendly. Please, please, if you're imagining that, stop imagining it. Um, I show you what wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on from our introductory question. And uh, Dom, it's time for us to do a little bit of grilling of you and and uh, what you're all about. Uh, if you're ready sure. for that, I'm I'm here for it. I'm happy, <laughs> more than happy. Let's do to- it. Cool. Um, so I guess the the best place to start is is at the beginning. Um, what what's your origins? What's your origin story for the Dreamcast? Uh, where where did that all begin? How did you how did you get your first one? How did you fall in love with it? Ah, uh, so I, I I wanted like I wish I had a, an exciting story for this, but it's probably the most just boring generic nineties kid story. I just um, my mom and dad bought me one um, in Christmas of. 98 i want to say okay it was either 98 or 99 it was pretty early in its lifespan um with sonic adventure i was excited obviously because it's a new console but i I don't think i I, i'd grown up having the the mega drive and then and then the saturn and then i was like oh there's there's another one a new one of these just comes out every few years i I don't think i i um grasped the gravitas of it and then when we threw on sonic adventure and that big whale came on (laughs) um (laughs) you know I, i was like wow this is uh this is quite uh, a unique experience and then me and my dad spent uh sort of all of christmas day and all of boxing day just just playing that constantly and then um i fell in love with the the sort of aesthetic qualities of of the console um it, it's i suppose in a way that a lot of people say just generically about fifth and sixth gen stuff that there's a lot of very experimental games on there that are quite colorful and, and unique you know when when people sort of get start thinking about the ps2 and start thinking about stuff like uh katamari damasi and stuff like that i suppose for me it was always the dreamcast because i just um just used to rent we lived right around the corner from a, a video shop if you remember those and we just used to rent a lot of dreamcast games we'd do like a weekend rental and and just got through you know all the big hits like power stone tech romancer sort of the berserk mac and x all these crazy games and every time i threw in a new game i never knew what to expect and coming from uh the mega drive and the saturn were you know most things were just oh it's going to be a platformer or maybe it's an rpg the the variety in the games and how experimental some of them got when jet set radio came out i'd I'd never seen anything like that before um so i suppose yeah that's that's my origin story if you like i just um the the console bowled me over by how unique it was and how kind of varied the library uh was and and i, I just don't think that's been parallel uh, parallel since on any other console really yeah it's like i say it's, it's not it's 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 a familiar story because so many people have that um you know especially people who came from previous sega consoles they kind of have that thing oh i just got it because it was the next sega console but then yeah. got kind of blown away by it um how, how old were you when you got the dreamcast do you remember um so i was i was born in 88 there you go um, that's an inside scoop for you so i would have been 10 then <laughs> in 98 so yeah 10 years old probably the, okay. the perfect age maybe <laughs> i don't know yeah yeah that's really cool about the the rental store it sounds like you got through some sort of deep cuts there like uh tech romancer and mac and x i mean they're not that deep but like they're pr- they're pro- they're not like the you know when there's like these lists online they're not like the first games to come up so that's pretty cool that you you know you're able to experience some of the kind of I suppose, you know, to use the generic term, hidden gems, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it was actually a lot of my dad's influence that my dad was such a cool guy. <laughs> I remember sometimes he'd just come home and he'd be like, uh, 
I remember when he got Sword of the Berserk, and you know, if you're worried about oh, a ten year old playing Sword of the Berserk, um, because you've maybe read the manga, it doesn't have any of the super dodgy content <laughs> in there. It's, it's a little bit gory, but otherwise, it's just a, a beat him up game. But you know, he came home, and my dad, if he ever got a game that was higher age rating, he'd always play it himself to check the content before showing me. But he played through Sword of the Berserk, and then he's like, "Oh, there's this game, and it's like this seven foot tall knight with a your massive sword, and he just fights these like zombie bad guys, and it's really cool. I think you'll like it." And that's like, "Wow!" And that's how I got into Berserk. So a lot of the time, my dad would just come home with esoteric and strange games, and we'd just play nice. them. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Did he let you play Dead or Alive 2 at 10 years old <laughs> with, uh, with jiggle it, physics? I think the age setting was on zero, so we had no jiggle. <laughs> no jiggle. Okay, yeah. that's fair. <laughs> Do you remember the age slider on that where you can... That, yeah. that, um... All the way up to 99, because apparently at 99, <laughs> you like them jiggly. <laughs> as jiggly as they'll get. At 99, it, be- it becomes un- unplayable because everyone's just... <laughs> it gets very surreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um so, I mean, with with that, then obviously you were you were ten when it came out, so it didn't last very long. So I guess you were still quite young when it got discontinued. Do you, was there any kind of? Did you remember the? Do you remember the discontinuation? Did it matter to you at the time, or did you just move on to the next thing? I don't think I really understood the concept of something being discontinued, um, particularly because, like, we still had the Mega Drive in the home, we still had the Saturn in the home. So to me, like those things hadn't gone away. It's just that oh, now I'm playing this thing um so i still had the dreamcast um in the living room until i was maybe 15 or 16 and then it went to the attic and then it moved to the attic in my new house and now it's here <laughs> so it's just kind of followed me around um i suppose i realized oh, there's, there's not new games coming out for this anymore but i'm just one of those people who just replay games so we we got a ps2 and you know had a lot of fun with that as well um and I suppose, yeah, I was I was sad that there didn't seem to be any Dreamcast stuff coming out, but I don't think it ever dawned on me until I, I got older and got more online that, oh, they literally just stopped it. <laughs> mm. Mm. Oh. That's fair enough. You mentioned that you had the Dreamcast and it kind of went up in the attic. Yeah. And obviously you kind of got on with like the PS2, you know, all the other things, you know. Was there a moment after that, you know, so many years later where something clicked and the Dreamcast came back to you, I suppose? Yeah, but I, d- I don't want to um, be be super sad and bring <laughs> bring the tone down at all. But it was um, it was when I lost uh, my dad, which is a few years back now. So I'm, I'm certainly not going to like m- make the podcast all gloomy about it. But um, during you know remembering fond times of my dad because he was a great guy, I loved him very much. One of the things that really sticks out is we just played a heck of a lot of Dreamcast games together. Yeah, and I suppose that one of the driving um, things for getting that back out was like that's a good way to sort of remember those times. And then, it, you know, in the process, like, oh, actually, regardless of, of nice memories, these just really stand up as, like, very solid games. Definitely, um, yeah. You know, uh, and, and um, uh, you know, we'd just gone through a time there around uh, 2008, 9, 10, when um, games were kind of generally seen as being a bit, in a bit of a rut with the PS3 and stuff. Uh, it's not like there weren't any good games, but there was a lot of very uh, westerny military shooters. Everything was very grey, and I, I um, agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not that like there weren't any good games in that time because you still had like I think Borderlands is pretty good. The Batman Arkham games are good and stuff, but th- there was just there wasn't anything where I had that kind of Blue Stinger or Toy Commander or Sonic Adventure moment of being like, "Wow, this is what I've been waiting for." Um, so I became a bit disillusioned with games, and then uh, and then yeah later kind of whipped out the old dreamcast again and was like wow this this is where it's at we we should just not have progressed past this as a society this is where we peaked <laughs> yeah we, we needed those blue skies very much didn't yeah. we and it mm-hmm. took a while for it to get back there i think as well other than the odd indie game so i mean i guess that leads us to how you got started with with the youtube channel what inspired you to kind of start uh, doing dreamcast stuff on on youtube oh th- this is a little bit of a random story i was um cat sitting for my mum <laughs> my mum had got on ho- gone on holiday and said will you come around for the week and you know just just kind of live in the flat and feed the cat and I was like okay but I'll need something to do so I brought my dreamcast with me so I was playing a lot of that um and that obviously we a lot of us work from home these days so I just had my work laptop and this really um rubbishy uh headset mic um you know just for for doing teams calls and I'd 
one evening just after playing some Dreamcast games, I was like, I should really write, try and sort of jot down some thoughts on why I think this is so unique. Maybe I could post it on a blog somewhere or something. And I ended up writing this uh, bit of writing that became a video called the the Dreamcast Aesthetic, which is remains my most popular video at the minute. Um, and the the recording quality on that is is diabolical because I literally just um, I had this script and I had this like I say terrible um, work headset, and I just sort of recorded myself reading the script, wrote and threw a few. Um, Dreamcast soundtracks behind it that I recorded on a phone. So I didn't know anything about recording quality at that time. Um, but it's, you know, it's a very authentic summing up of, of my feelings around kind of the, what I like about the aesthetic and what I like about, I sort of characterize the Dreamcast as, as a very positive and optimistic console. A lot of the games that came out um, really have a, a very upbeat summer holiday vibe to them. And I, mm. I think I just wanted to talk about that. And then, I was amazed at the amount of response I got from it. <laughs> and then I thought, well, I'll just carry on doing this then if people like it. And I'll use a better microphone next time and learn a bit more about how to how to make it sound good. <laughs> so so did that particular video, because you said it was your most viewed, yeah. did, you, did it get picked up by the algorithm? Like, was there a moment when you were like, oh, wow, what's happening here? Yeah, so I, I put it up, um, I think that one's from like October last year or something. And it got about I don't know, thirty or forty views, and I was like, "Yeah, it seems seems about right." I'm talking about something very niche. I didn't I didn't really expect that many people to to uh, be interested in it. And I just happened to check back in January. Like I was still putting out a couple of videos here and there. I just happened to check back uh, on my YouTube in January or February or something, and it had um, like thirty thousand views, and now it's like got fifty three thousand views. So it just <laughs> seems to have uh, fallen into the algorithm, and a lot of people are checking it out. Which in a way is great because it's good exposure for the channel, but in a way it's bad because the, the sound quality is terrible. And a lot of videos are like, "Please get a better mic." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could you could re-record that now. I guess you could re redo it with all the current equipment you have. That might be something to re- remaster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. do a little remaster, re-release yeah. on it. <laughs> Director's cut. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Dreamcast aesthetic DX. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, so, I mean, obviously that's your most popular video, but what uh, what are your favorite videos that you've made? Um, I think just the stuff where I'm I'm trying to like really plug big memories from my childhood that that nobody seems to get. So I, I'm one of those people where you know when you like um a band or a film or something and, and you, your mates just don't seem to get it and you're like but why this thing's wonderful that's what i'm like with blue stinger <laughs> so i've got this <laughs> video called blue stinger is the most underrated game of all time which is like sounds like an ironic hypey title but it's, it's my genuine opinion i really do think it is um like just this this wonderfully crazy off the wall whimsical game and and no one ever seems to talk about it so I think I think that one is 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 one that I'm pretty proud of. I did a, a half hour deep dive into D2, which I'm I was pretty happy about, and recently did one about Fantasy Star. So they're the ones that stick out to me. But if I was gonna go and tell anyone to just check out one video, I'd say Blue Stinger, just because I want more people to know about that. <laughs> yeah. Is, did you play that game like right when it came out then? Yeah, I was I was right in the pocket for that. Um, as soon as it came out, I think I think it came out around my birthday, and that was my birthday present for that year because I think um, my dad was like, "Oh, you know, you like Resident Evil, you'll you'll like this. We'll we'll play this one." And obviously, for anyone that's played Blue Stinger, it's absolutely nothing like Resident Evil. That was completely. <laughs> um, I think it was really mismarketed, <laughs> not not in Japan, but I think over here, a lot of games magazines were like, "Step aside, Resident Evil. There's a new contender." And, you know, when you play it, it it certainly isn't trying to be a new Resident Evil. It's just this absolutely wacky B movie with all these odd anime tropes and a billion weapons and just a. Uh, it's it's a really funny and, and upbeat game, but yeah. yeah, it's not Resident Evil. <laughs> it's not trying to be either. In your video, you uh, you said that you played it. You played the Japanese version. Like I, I'm familiar that this Japanese version is different, but I've never actually given it a go myself. Oh yeah, it's it's considerably different. So initially, when I got it, it was just because um, it has d- different camera angles. It has fixed camera angles, right? Resident Evil, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Like it, it's it's interesting enough that I always just replay this game at least once a year. Anyway, I may as well give it a, a look in this new new dimension um but also in there there's there's like um different dialogue in certain parts so there's a part where janine king references peter pan 
there's a part where when Elliot's climbing up a wall, I think he says something like, I'm just like Spider-Man. And I assume those are things that got cut for maybe copyright reasons. Right, right. And then there's also a few unique assets in the uh, like in the Hello Market, which is one of the early game areas when you're at. It's just a, a big um, Don Quixote superstore, basically. And when you're on the top floor of that, in the European release, I, I don't think it says anything on the floor, if I remember rightly, but in the Japanese version, it says uh, specially place, which I assume means like special place or special offer or something. But I think when the localization teams got hold of it, they were like, oh, that, that doesn't really make a great deal of sense in the in the native language so we'll just we'll just cut that out and replace it with a generic texture but it's it's just interesting to find stuff like that yeah just to sort of jump in off that as well there's quite a few of the videos i quite liked from you were were ones where you kind of look into like sort of obscure japanese games and <laughs> and one of them was obviously doraemon um oh yeah that was quite an interesting little little deep dive. Like, do you do you enjoy like sifting through the library to find these kind of obscure games? Just are you into quite into that? I get the impression you are. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, th- thank you for the for uh, for in- enjoying that video as well. I'm glad you liked that one. <laughs> I suppose when I when I first like got my Dreamcast back in the day, I, I realized the library was really good and really varied, but I never realized how how big it was. And then as, as I got older, and obviously you can get the internet, I was like, wow, a lot of games just never left Japan, but they look awesome. Mm. And when I saw that uh, Doraemon one, I, I was like, oh, he's he's not a character I know a lot about, but he's, he's quite an iconic look, you know, this cute little sort of fat blue cat. Um, I like I like his design. I was like, oh, I'd, I'd like to play a little game where you play as him. Um, so yeah, I just, I just got hold of that one. And um, I was like, wow, this is a really strange game because it almost feels like it's trying to be Shenmue and Paper <laughs> Mario and also yeah. it's got some mini games in there but also it kind of feels like it isn't finished but that is fascinating I, I want to talk about it <laughs> you know that's it. yeah that's it like I think I think that's kind of what I gravitate to with the Dreamcast that kind of I suppose that that potential Dorybod's funny because like especially in your video you point out that when you, you can go in this like 3D mode and walk around the town <laughs> But like it doesn't really add anything because <laughs> yeah. when you get to like say the entrance to somewhere, you have to open the map and go on the map to go to the new place. So it's like <laughs> there's the 3D mode almost kind of doesn't need to be there. It's it's definitely like they've they've obviously ran out of time or budget or something. So it's it's one of those DIY elements though that like if it appeared in a FromSoft game, people would be like, what does that mean? What's the law behind the fact that he can't travel and he has to fast travel? Does this say something about the nature of the human soul? <laughs> you know, um, but but obviously, yeah, it's just it seems like they just run out of time or money. But but it's still a really cute game. Um, but yeah, I, I like just checking out um, random stuff because there just seems like a a massive wealth of of Japanese games and and ones that haven't been getting translated. But uh, Lewis, I think you do a plug on the um, on on that samurai uh samurai showdown spin-off the gift she gave me yeah um that that looks incredible i'm gonna i'm gonna check that one out so that that's what i like is when you know the the community the dreamcast community seems still really strong you know someone just comes out and has is like here's an english patch for this 20 year old game like like for rent hero like you've done for uh, the gift she gave me I, I love that because then it's like oh i can i can get it and i can enjoy it in more or less the intended way i can understand the story um so so i think that's that's re- a really cool aspect of the community nice <laughs> so i'm guessing that you must have a modded dreamcast to play all these different games or do you do you have a, a modded dreamcast or do you buy all these games legitimately <laughs> no i i so i do buy the games legitimately but then i will yeah. tend to run the roms on redream um mm. the emulator and the simple reason for that is because it's easier for me to record. I don't know much about technology and capture cards, so if I can just run it onto my computer screen and and record it, I'll I'll just do that. Um, but I don't I don't support piracy. I support owning the actual thing. <laughs> nice. So do you have you have quite a big collection then? I guess. Yeah, I do. Um, I do, and and it just sort of sits uh, in a little quiet corner in the study and and just grows every time I have a few quid in my pocket which at the minute is not very often but but, you know it used to be more often (laughs) god here's a random question what's the last game you bought um oh gosh what was it It, i hope it's something really weird and obscure it was it was something japanese and you know i think it might have been frame grind 
Um, oh, okay. You know the the FromSoft awesome. mech fighting game, mm. where it's kind of a medieval mech game. Yeah, I think it might have been that. Oh, nice. That's 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 another one that's been translated. Like it's yeah. So yeah, we we owe it, we owe it to the community <laughs> for that. <laughs> Absolutely. For, nice, nice. Um, I also have another question. Sorry for the on the spot. No, no trouble. We we sound more professional uh, on the 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 pods that go out than we do in the <laughs> moment. But I just because because we were talking about you know obviously your videos getting picked up by the algorithm. Like what? Um, how's like the the reaction from people been? And how you know how has that been good? Like have you had a lot of good feedback and a lot of good conversations with people? I guess. Oh, yeah, actually. It, th- so that's been a real eye opener for me in terms of just how kind of far reaching the, the community is, because I'm, I'm always aware of kind of, um, you know, specialist uh, sites like, like yourselves that, that focus on these things and keep it alive. I think that's really cool. But I always wonder how far reaching it, it is, because when I'm playing video games with my my friends, some of them still like old old school stuff, so we'll I can still maybe convince them to play Power Stone or, or um like uh Soul Calibur, but you know, none of them have any major nostalgia for the Dreamcast. And I always think like, am I the only one? But I'm obviously not. And um yeah, when I put the videos up, um so many positive comments where, where people are like, Wow, you've just unlocked a, a memory from my childhood, or sometimes people will just give me a, a random fact about a game that I didn't know. And just, it's it's been a really cool way to connect with with people. Um, I would say ninety five percent of the comments have been positive. <laughs> this has been a, a, a few <laughs> weird ones where like someone didn't like that I don't like Shadow the Hedgehog. Or oh, wow. in one in one video, I, I said that I think racism is bad, and I lost a few subscribers over that because they <laughs> they said that I was being um, an, an extreme Marxist leftist and. I just thought racism being bad is is a pretty standard view, but apparently it's yeah. that's quite niche. That's, that's that's quite a hot take, apparently. <laughs> but on the whole, it, it's just been really genuine, lovely people just talking about their childhood or the memories they have with these games. Especially um, the Fantasy Star Online one I just did. I never got to to experience that online back in the day because we had this terrible modem that wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't do it. Um, but I played a lot of it offline, and I was just talking about my experiences with that. And the amount of people that were like, oh, we still run like a private server, you know, come and come and jump on our server and have mm. a go with us so you can experience it online. And that's just really nice. You know, it just it just feels like a very welcoming community on the whole. So, yeah, it's it's it, we've had some great conversations out of it. Oh, excellent. That's awesome. That's very cool. It's, I mean, the Dreamcast community overall is is such a welcoming community, I find, like. You know, I was I was fairly new to it. I mean, I've been in the community for some time just as a as an observer and a and a lover of the Dreamcast, but when I kind of came into it from writing the book in like 2018, 2019, it was quite amazing how quickly people take to you and and, yeah. and just want to introduce you to all the cool stuff and uh and are kind of happy to hear, you know, your thoughts on stuff. So yeah, it's it's awesome that you've you've had that experience with people as well. And you know, the the five percent of people that have left weird comments, well, <laughs> It's just the internet for you, isn't it? That's just YouTube, isn't it? That, that just happens. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, th- I think the community is very, I suppose it's, it's kind of humble. And obviously, like we say, you get the odd weirdo. But like overall, it's like very humble because we're, we're here championing a console that failed, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we've all got to be a little bit kind of rooting for the underdog. So I, th- I think we're all a little bit kind of hopefully very nice and, and, you know, we're all quirky in our way. So yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. good community. I love interacting with it and, and you know, being part of it. So yeah, it's good to hear that you've got lots of good feedback um, and people sharing their memories. That's like, There's a lot of that in the Dreamcast uh, community. Mm-hmm. I think that's half of why we're here, right? Yeah, it's 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 such a a, a little window of nostalgia because I believe it did exist for such a short time, but I think it was such a pivotal time, late nineties, early two thousands, where there was just so much. I think gen general kind of goodwill and optimism around in in the world at that time. Um, yeah, uh, and and yeah, the the Dreamcast really embodies a lot of that, and I think a lot of people like talking about it, which is it's always nice to hear. I always love reading those comments. Oh, yeah. Excellent. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, like, what's next for the channel then, Dom? Um, I mean, I, I think I've, I've fallen into a groove where I kind of do a couple of short videos, um, like just maybe more standard game reviews. So I'm planning on doing a, a Mac and X one soon and a sort of the Berserk one. 
Um, but then I'll do some some bigger deep dive ones on a, you know just a topic like an aesthetic or something. I really want to talk about, and I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do this yet, but I really want to do a video about the sort of culture around uh, weekend rentals, um, like I was talking about at the the start of the show yeah, about you know yeah. rent and stuff with my dad because I just think. I don't know what the modern day equivalent of that is. And I, I guess it's something like having a, a PSN subscription where you could just try out a bunch of games for a nominal fee. Um, but I do, there's just something really special on like a, a Friday afternoon, you know, you finish school and you, you, you know, in my case, my dad's like, let's go to the video shop and we'll get a film and we'll get a game for the weekend. And, um, you know, just trying to decide what to get. And then, it was interestingly hit or miss because you're stuck with that all weekend. And sometimes you're like, wow, this is one of the best weekends of my life. And sometimes you're like, why did I rent? Oh, I was trying to think of a hilariously bad game. I was going to say, did you have, what are the games that like you got stuck with in that regard? The bad ones? Um, I I think I fell out of favor with um, like Quake 3 Arena, which a lot of people, you know, love Ooh, that game. Yeah. But uh, coming on the back of Quake 1 and 2, which was obviously very like single player focused, and I didn't do a lot of multiplayer stuff, even with my friends or even with my dad. We'd just kind of do couch co-op, passing the controller back and forth um, and, and blasting through single player. So when that um, Quake 3 came out and it was all just multiplayer focused, at, it's not a bad game by any means. It's it's a really cool game mechanically. But, you know, I was kind of sat there and like, well, this is my weekend, just battling bots on Quake 3. Right, yeah, <laughs> kind of thing. yeah. <laughs> See that? Yeah, that's a game that even is pretty fun split screen. But yeah, I think if you were just doing it like battling bots, it might get a bit boring. Yeah, we only had one controller. So I think if we'd have had two controllers or if I'd had a friend come around and bring theirs, it'd have been a different story. But it was just essentially just me sat in my pajamas battling bots and feeling a bit like, oh, I probably should have rented something else. Oh, that's a cool idea for a video. I'd be, be very interested to, uh, to see that one because mm. like we were saying, it's like, the fact that you were able to experience games like Mac and X and, and, and Tech Romance as sort of the berserk, like that's pretty, pretty cool, you know, because I think, I think if you were, I guess, spending all your hard earned on like, you know, buying a game outright, you're probably going to go for something a little bit more, you know, like the, the big hitters, I suppose, rather than those kind of under the surface kind of games. Yeah, exactly. So like you, T- today you know obviously I'm, I'm not no longer spending my parents money i uh, earn my own money but i'm still very careful about if i'm going to buy a game i almost obsessively research like will i enjoy this um, <laughs> or, or something that, that i know you know is just a, a shoe in like sonic frontiers of course i'm going to buy it or i recently bought that um virtual on japanese collection for the, the ps5 uh, and i was like well mm. i'm obviously going to enjoy virtual on but yeah, it, going back in, in the day, if I'd have, if I'd have been in a, a shop and thinking, am I going to buy Tech Romancer? I probably wouldn't have paid full price to experience that, but it was a great thing to rent. Yeah, and you also talk about Sword of the Berserk, uh, doing a Sword of the Berserk video. Mm-hmm. So here's my question: Have you played the super uh, in-depth fan translation that like lines it up with the manga? Because you said you're interested in Berserk, so yeah. So I am aware of that, but I haven't actually check that out yeah so what i was going to do because i'm just familiar with the the sort of vanilla sort of the berserk i'm just going to kind of base my my video around my experiences with the vanilla version but i'm either going to take a look at the fan translation as kind of an appendix to that or maybe as a totally different video and and talk about some of the big differences because i am really interested in that um the reason i wanted to do the the, the 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 european version or the, the western version is because i want to talk about the voice actors on there because it's it's really interesting who voices who mm. because as i grew up and started watching the the 90s anime and i like the the guys uh, that do the, the voices in that and then when i went back to play the game i was like oh i'm sure it's probably the same voice actors but no uh, guts in sort of the berserk is voiced by michael bell who is raziel from soul reaver and then yeah. Hook, the little elf, is voiced by Cam Clark, who is Liquid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> so um, it's just this bizarre cast of, of voice actors that are all doing a great job. And I thought I could get some mileage talking about that. It's kind of weird, esoteric thing that I like to dine out on. <laughs> yeah, when, when that undubbed translation patch came out, you know, I, I think we tweeted it out like, could this be the definitive version of this game? And people were like, no, we need all the voices. You know, <laughs> yeah. that was important to people. I 
quite like to return to that topic actually that we we did you know the, a few episodes ago and obviously you did a whole video about it like games that um you know have the dreamcast energy like what what were, what are your like favorite non-dreamcast games that embody the dreamcast energy yeah, I do think the indie scene's been really integral on bringing that back. I, I have um, a massive wish list on sort of Steam of games that just appear to have a vaguely Dreamcast the aesthetic, um, or or like share some similarities. So like one I I was really excited about in the last few years was uh, Solar Ash by Heart Machine, mm-hmm. which is very Jet Set Radio-y if it was a you know space adventure. Um, I don't know if you guys have played that one. That's a very cool game. I've not played it yeah. myself. Have you played it, Andrew? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Hyperlight Drifter. Yeah, um, yeah. And Solar Ash is very cool. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm very excited for Hyperlight Breaker because it seems like it's taking the best of Hyperlight Drifter and the best of Solar Ash and kind of melding them together, which is very cool. So I, d- I didn't know about that one being in the works. I'm excited for that one now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like it's a 3D Hyperlight Drifter essentially. So it's kind of taken that 3D inspiration from Solar Ash, and uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. I'm excited about it now. Yeah, now that I know yeah. about it, it sounds cool. <laughs> um, so I've got I've got a couple of those. Solar Ash would definitely be on that list um and also are you guys familiar with uh, aragami at all um yeah by um lintzworks it's really sad because they only did two of them and now lintzworks have gone uh, i think into to liquidation yeah. now i don't know if I was they're gonna say yeah they've uh, they're closing which is very sad it is because uh, aragami 2 made a couple of missteps by going a bit more realistic and a bit more online and stuff but it was still a decent game but aragami 1 is very um that that was a moment for me i think that came out in maybe 2014 no 2016 i think that was a moment for me where i just i got that game on a whim because i was like oh it says something about ninjas maybe it'll be a bit like tenchu and i was like no this actually feels a lot more like it could have been on the dreamcast like if um Mm. if the dreamcast had a an answer to tenchu stealth assassins it would be origami because it's got the kind of jet set radio cell shading look everything's um nice and clean and and round looking but not super detailed so very very fifth gen sixth gen in that in that dreamcast pocket all of the missions are divided up um it, you know it, it's just 10 10 short missions or 12 short missions uh, it's a very modular game uh I, li- I like that one a lot and um if you have either of you guys played um uh astral chain on the nintendo switch oh, i'm very yeah. familiar with it yeah yeah so i mean the gameplay wise that that's not dreamcasty at all because it's another one of those platinum games super difficult character action things which which i don't i don't necessarily love those games but the the aesthetic of that game and the there's a big hangout vibe so for anyone that's not familiar it's kind of a futuristic policey anime ghost in the shell kind of a game um where you you take on the part of a, a rookie cop who's joined the special team to fight these weird monsters um <laughs> but a lot of the game is just pottering about in the station talking to your colleagues getting weird side quests and gossip and just just shen mooing it up you know and that that one for me really feels really feels dreamcasty um i'm sure there's a there's a ton more like i say my steam wish list is kind of full of games um I came across one the other day called Boomerang X, and I'm like, could this be a Mac and X reference? And then when I've <laughs> looked at it, it's a first person game where you throw a boomerang, and it is quite six genny looking. And I'm like, you think it could be Mac and X? So I'll let you know when I buy it. You know, um, so I'm always on the lookout for that. I think I think the indie scene's been really integral to bringing that about. Like Devolver Digital, have been great. Uh, High Hell is another one. I'm just rambling at this point, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. That's fine. You've you've reminded me of something which. I'm not sure if we've mentioned it here before, but I, if we have, I apologise. Is it? Have we mentioned Slave Zero X at all? Does anybody know about that? No. Ooh, now the name does ring a bell. I think it might be one of those in 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 the wish list. Um, yeah, but I, I can't to the, to can't for the life of me place exactly what it is. Yeah, so obviously Slave Zero was a game that it was. I think it was a PC game that got ported to Dreamcast, right? So it was Infogrames, was it? I I played that one. Big big Mac. Yeah, running around. Yeah, it was cool. Exactly. Game. Yeah. And there's actually a sequel to that, which is Slave Zero X, which is coming out soon. There's a demo on Steam at the moment for it, and it's more, it's like a 2.5D game. Um, so obviously that's that's just a direct sequel to a game that exists on Dreamcast. So it's not like it's, uh, it doesn't quite fit into the old oh, things that are the kind of Dreamcasty. But when we were talking about that kind of stuff, um, it kind of, I was like, oh yeah, this game exists. <laughs> it's like, you know, Dreamcast people should probably be aware of that. 
Absolutely. And and if that's not in my wish list, it, it will be um, shortly after after this because I'll go and I'll go and look it up. Because yeah, I really enjoyed Slave Zero. I felt like that was an underrated game. There was a few mm-hmm. of those weird PC ports um for, for Dreamcast that I felt were underrated, uh, Hidden uh, Hidden and Dangerous and um mm. Soldier of Fortune. Yeah, love Soldier of Fortune. Yeah, it was a great game and it wasn't necessarily optimized for Dreamcast, but I felt like it ran great and uh yeah, I, re- I really liked that one. Yeah. I mean, being able to dismember people with your gun and <laughs> shoot them so their guts their guts come out. I mean, that's basically like a teenager's dream, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It, I was right in the pocket for that when it came out. I was just starting high school, and I was like, "Yeah, this is edgy." I was, you know, listening <laughs> to some terrible metal bands. Um, not not to ride on metal. I still listen to a lot of metal, but I don't listen to whatever terrible stuff I was listening to in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well. I think we've covered a lot of ground, uh, of a lot of stuff, and I'm um, excited to my, for myself go and watch some of your videos, and hopefully um, a lot of our listeners will go and uh, kind of watch those as well. Uh, <laughs> so but they need to know where to go. So the, the next thing is, where, where can people find your amazing YouTube videos? Oh, thank you. Well, they're, they're all just on, uh, on YouTube under Dreamcast Enjoyer, just a very, very simple name. That's what it says in the tent. If you enjoy the Dreamcast, hopefully you'll enjoy that channel. Um, I'm I'm not on any of the socials. I did I had an Instagram for a bit and considered getting a Twitter, but decided against it because um, I Wise. just Wise. <laughs> I'm I'm terrible at keeping stuff updated. Whereas I find if it's just all in one place, it's just all on YouTube, and then you have that like, little community section on YouTube where you can post updates. So I'll be like, oh, playing playing this game today. What do you guys think about this one? You know, so I have that little way of like uh, mm. interacting with people who subscribe. Um, but I, I just wanted to, to say as, as well, um, thank you to you guys for, for having me on. Like I say, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the junkyard, big, big fan of the, the work you guys are doing and following, uh, some of the guests that, that you've had on. Um, like I, I was saying before, Lewis, you, you interviewed, um, Ross Kilgareth, who did Harley Quest and, um, Andrew, you've interviewed one of my favorite people in Jörg Tittle. The mm-hmm. guy I'm very jealous of because he was friends with Shinya Nishigaki, who did Blue Stinger. Yeah. And I just think following, you know, those kind of really talented game devs that, that kind of probably a lot of people have heard of. And you, know, you stuck with me today, but I really appreciate uh, having the chance uh, to, to chat about it. Don't don't listen to Dom. His videos are great. Go check them out. <laughs> yeah, thank <laughs> you very much. I, I think so many people, I think this, it goes back to the community thing, right? There's so many people who do so many varied things throughout the Dreamcast community. And every single one of those things is valid, whether you're translating old games, whether you're creating new games based on Dreamcast properties, whether you're talking about the Dreamcast or making videos about old games. It's all it all kind of feeds back into the community in some way and you know either brings new people in who who then also love the dreamcast and then feeds into the dev scene and the homebrew and indie games and it all just feeds into everything so i think you know everybody has their place and everybody is kind of on an equal footing i would say so yeah oh, it's, a, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on and uh you know stand side by side with other people we've interviewed absolutely thank you very very much Awesome. You've said you don't have any other socials, which is probably a very wise move. Uh, Lewis, you have some socials though, don't you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter, at LewisJFC. Follow me on there to hear me make bad jokes and then pro- promptly delete them because I got embarrassed <laughs> like two seconds later. Um, yeah, you can follow me. But follow the Junkyard, which Andrew will plug. I will. Uh, so you can go and follow the junkyard on Twitter, which is the DC Junkyard at the DC Junkyard. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, we have a lovely community over there, uh, headed up by people like John. Uh, so please do go over to the Dreamcast Junkyard uh, group page uh, and uh, share your memories there with everybody. With the sixteen thousand odd people who love the Dreamcast over there, so please do go share your memories there. Uh, you can also join us on Discord, where there's a lot of lively chat and banter are going on about all sorts of things Dreamcast related, sometimes not Dreamcast related as well, but by and large Dreamcast related. Uh, so check out our website, thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk, where you'll find a link to the Discord and also, of course, our blog. Uh, so please do take a read of the blog. We've got some excellent things. For instance, the uh, to, to speak of Jörg to tell again, we've got the C-Smash VRS review uh, that Brian has written for us, which is excellent. It's a good review, yeah. Of course, and a bunch of other stuff as well, which we've had recently, which is great. Um, we're also on YouTube, uh, as well as Dom, uh, maybe don't release as many videos as Dom does, uh, but I think, are we just the DC Junkyard there as well? Yeah, I think if you just search the Dreamcast Junkyard, we'll yeah. come up. I was just going to 
say that I really enjoy some of the stuff you guys do. Sorry to, to put you <laughs> off, but um, uh, you, uh, some of the like tech demo stuff, like um, that just things I never would have thought to cover, like that um, Tower of Babel tech demo, and mm. uh, just just some of the like weird esoterica that you've you've covered on there, I, I find really fascinating. So it's it's well worth a follow. I, I was do, just trying to give you a plug. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I, I do say people should check out um, Kev's recent video, which is just mm. like such an out of left field thing to talk about. But that's what I love about the Dreamcast. There's always something yes. to talk about. And it's the MB, what was it NBA and NFL 2K games in Japan had like bible editions that came with like these big booklets and he he just has a look at them in this video it's like i never knew about them but it was cool to hear him talk about them so yeah, yeah. that was a good video nice one kev yeah that sounds cool people need to prod kev a bit more to do more videos i think i know he's busy but um more videos kev we need more videos um, <laughs> but yes uh, so that's how you can that's where you can find us you can also go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash DC Junkyard if you want to throw us a few pounds or whatever your local currency is to help us buy more VMU batteries. Um, <laughs> but in seriousness, that does go towards running the site, uh, kind of upkeep costs and things like that. It's uh, unfortunately not free <laughs> to run the podcast, to run the website. There are a few little costs involved. So if you want to help us out with that, uh, then buy us a VMU battery. We would be very grateful because apparently we can pay for all of our bills using VMU batteries. <laughs> um so please do go do and uh, do that if you wish to. Uh, you don't have to, uh, but it would be lovely if you if you could spare us a few quid. And uh, and finally, you can you can also follow me if you want to uh, at oddment eighty four on Twitter. I'm sometimes there. Uh, I've just deleted it from my phone today to stop myself from doom scrolling. Uh, <laughs> so I may not be on it quite as often, especially as uh, as Elon seems to like to mess it up. I think didn't didn't the, the app go down or something today? It just stopped working. I oh. believe it's just like. I, I was madness. busy playing Apple Tail and not <laughs> well, scrolling my phone for once, which is something I probably do too much. Did yeah, he t- well. didn't he like remove everybody that hasn't been active in about 30 days so i think i did make a twitter account at one point it won't exist anymore because he'll have just wiped it from existence <laughs> i think he, i think he's like still Elon. on there yeah oh I, I, am i yeah i've yeah, never yeah. i don't think i've ever posted anything i don't think i, I ever will either but i think it's there I, I, yeah. it was quite funny like we we surpassed um 10k followers on twitter but i put in my my blog post about it like if he's deleting inactive people maybe we'll lose like immediately lose them but it doesn't seem to have happened so <laughs> okay. i don't know if he's if he's kept that uh promise up or whatever but yeah hopefully so. not because congrats to the 10k guys <laughs> yeah thank you, thank I, th- you. I, th- yeah. I, I think we're near nearing 11k but thanks to aaron all the way back in the day who set up that that twitter account yeah (laughs) all right so i think that's i think that's everything um i've i've covered all the bases and yeah just give us a follow on any of the things i mentioned and uh, yeah feel free to drop us a few quid for a vmu battery if you fancy it and yeah we will see you in the next one thank you very much again uh dom for coming in and chatting with us it's been a pleasure Oh, it's a pleasure it's all mine thank you very very much for having me on it's been lovely thank you and uh everybody listening have a great rest of your day i suppose or if you're listening to us before you go to bed have some pleasant dreams keep on dreaming and uh, we'll see you next time Bye bye on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Please stop this disc now. 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 now.